Hi there, I'm coming to you from Camp Pendleton, which is between Orange County and San Diego. It's a Marine base, and we're here at the Scenic Lookout. I've got a question for you. Have you ever been ghosted by somebody who was important to you? Have you ever been unfollowed and someone just disappears from your life? Somebody that was a part of things? Well, it gets frustrating when that happens, when people just check out of our lives and go somewhere else. And my guess is we've ghosted other people too. Now, there's some people that really aren't a part of your life and they're real high maintenance and you don't need to include those people in your life, but in our extended families, in our work world, in our faith family, there are those people that are challenging. And we have a choice. We can either just go along with how challenging they are or we can ghost them. But the Apostle Paul does something different. He takes a middle path. He engages difficult people. And we've all got difficult people. And we've been difficult people to other people. The Apostle Paul had a really difficult church, and it was called the Church in Corinth. Now, the Church in Corinth was tragically dysfunctional, but Paul loved them very much. He had easy churches like Philippi and Berea, and he had difficult churches like Corinth. And he had a special love for these people, and he wrote two big, long letters and took three trips back and forth to visit them because they needed extra attention. And I'm talking really dysfunctional. You might think, well, I came from a dysfunctional church. Nothing like this. This was the kind of church where a lot of the members got involved in temple prostitution. And during communion, they would get drunk and make fun of poor people. So if, if you think that your church was dysfunctional, this was way more dysfunctional. But Paul loved them. Paul loved them and he wouldn't, he wouldn't disengage. He wouldn't ghost them. He wouldn't unfollow them. He couldn't spend all of his time with the easy people. And once again, I'm not saying you're obligated to be with difficult people, but those people who are a part of your faith family, your extended family, those people that are a part of your neighborhood that are difficult, the people right next door that you're going to see the rest of your life, those are people we have to engage. And we often learn more and grow more in working through stuff with them than we would have with just easy people. And Paul, send, Paul spends the entire chapter, 2 Corinthians 13, his last attempt that we have in writing to straighten them out. He says, I'm going to come to you guys. You guys have been acting up. Cut it out. I'm going to be a little tough with you, but you can change your ways before I get there. And how does he end it? Greet each other with a holy kiss. And he tells them how much he loves them. And that's so important that people hear how much we love them when we're engaging with difficult people. So that's the good news for today that we have an example in the Apostle Paul in how to deal with difficulty. Don't ghost people. Don't just go along with the difficulty and be difficult with them. Don't merge with difficulty. Engage with difficulty. Do the best you can and expect to grow and expect those people to grow too. There are some people that are worth not letting go of. And that's the good news for today. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow.